From shy guys to shy halud, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Erica Ishii. Hello, everyone. Emmy Quaker. Hey. And Becca Scott. How's it going? Um, how's everyone feeling? Ready for finger Good. guns. Pew! Pew! You're stuck in a crossfire already. I'm like right in the center of all of this. Yeah. I don't understand. This is the issue with like having uh, having folks who have like done the show before. We're like, it's like cool. I know what's going on, and it's like, wait, what's happening here? <laughs> like different levels of, of comfort immediately. Don't yeah. underestimate it. Right yeah. We've got a good vibe and everything. We had some time. Yeah, it was we great. had some time it was great. to hang great. out. Yeah. Good. Um, well, uh, you have played the game before, uh, Emmy, for you and for any new viewers at home. The rules of the game are simple. These are incorrect statements, but the things that you know and love, it's up to you to find the thing that's wrong. Buzz in, correct me. All your corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually. Uh, and you can interrupt me at any time you want. There's an energy on this couch. Uh, I've been working out my thumbs nonstop. So, Becca's very competitive. Sometimes it's just as fast. We're trying to get I'm the more competitive. First. Here's the thing, though. Tell, tell me the thing. So, Emmy and I are co-captains of our dodgeball team. Oh. Yeah. And I would say he's one of the few people in the world I might consider on par with my level of competitiveness. Oh, wow. She said on par. Yeah. I think it's like... Um, uh, that's very good to know going into this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Uh, well, with that, we're going to jump right in, and we'll see how good of a time we're going to have. Um, here's our first question. Billy D. Williams played District Attorney Harvey Dent in Tim Burton's original Batman film. He was also slated to reprise the role in Batman Returns, but the character was written out, and so he never got to play Dent's villainous alter ego, Two-Face. The next time Two-Face appeared in a movie was in Batman Forever, played by Tommy Lee Jones. Um, actually, it wasn't played by Billy Wilson. Uh, uh... That's a uh, beach boy. That's definitely a beach uh, boy. I, yeah. Um, actually, Billy D. Williams never actually played Two-Face. Uh, incorrect, incorrect. Oh. It is Billy, you're correct in that I did say Billy D. Williams. That correct. part is right. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so, but none of them were Beach Boys. <laughs> uh, that's true, none of them were Beach Boys. Thank but you. I didn't imply that they were. Erica. Um, actually, if you count the two-parter episode from Batman the Animated Series, that was another appearance of uh, Harvey Dent and Two-Face. The question does specify in a movie, so. Uh, the animated series would not come out there. Right. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say no one, no one uh, gets this one. Uh, is uh, it, oh, sure, Emmy, you wanna... Um, actually, he did have a chance to play Two-Face at some point in time. That's correct. That was uh, gonna be my can, guess. Can you be, so I'll say this. He does eventually play Two-Face, but where? Can so, if, what? If, if you can tell, if you can tell me, I'll give it to you unless someone can tell me where. Um, actually, he gets, to play it in the Lego Batman movie? That's correct. Oh my god! Yes! Yes! You did it! Nailed it! Oh my god! That was more of a team effort, really. Uh, we really sort of like walled our way in there. But uh, but yeah, Williams plays Two Face in the Lego Batman movie. Um, uh, the appearance of the character was even based on Williams' original Dent performance. Uh, so it was a long time coming, but yeah, uh, eventually got to play Two Face. It was just in Lego form many many years later. Yeah. You crush I don't it. get any points. No, I'm gonna give that to it's Erica. One I... point. But I assisted in her getting. You there. did. There's you no did the point. assist. You did. I know. Thank you for the help. It's okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> help you out oh. later on. Oh. It's okay. okay. I owe you one. Uh -oh. <laughs> Alliances okay. are being formed. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> things, things are happening. Look, sometimes I play fast and loose with the points. Sometimes it falls in your favor. Sometimes it falls in someone else's. You know, like, we'll see how it goes. All right, this next question is about Harry Potter. We all want to go to wizarding school, whether it's Beau Batons in France, Ilvermorny in the United States, Wagadu in Uganda, or the famed Hogwarts in England. But did you know that you could also attend WADA, AKA the Wizarding Academy of Dramatic Arts, to become a theatrical performer? Or perhaps hone your Quidditch skills at the Academy of Broom Flying? Where, where is this, is this all like J.K. Rowling's ancillary material you oh, can find for on the sure. website? Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Pottermore. This is Pottermore but nonsense. Pottermore this, bullshit. Oh, this is Pottermore bullshit <laughs> for sure. But look, that's that's all candid as far as... Uh, as so nobody. J.K. Rowling, you're a wizard <laughs> vocational school. I don't think J.K. Rowling gets to decide what's canon and what's not anymore, because this is crazy. One more, one more. Yep. 
We all want to go to wizarding school, whether it's Beau Batons in France, Ilvermorny in the United States, Wagadoo in Uganda, or the famed Hogwarts in England. Oh, also, oh, 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 actually, Hogwarts is in Scotland? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, There's a lot of reaction out there. Take it away and snap thing. They wiped the floor so clean. <laughs> uh, yeah, we snuck it in. Uh, Hogwarts <laughs> is in Scotland. Yeah! It's not in England. Wow. Um, everything wow. else is true, though. The Hogwarts Express takes such a long time. Of course they leave England. Yeah, get... it goes through the Highlands. I've been on that train. <laughs> I've been on the Hogwarts Express. I have. I was on the Hogwarts well, Express. So have I. It's in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> God. That point will go to Erica. Hogwarts is in Scotland. Here's a question about the Dresden Files. Which yes, at least, no, this is Becca. Which one of you put down? I guess it's, it's Becca. Um, uh, I'm not super familiar with it, but we wrote a question for it. Thank so, you. Let's see. And maybe someone else will just guess their way to victory and and spice I will be so angry. I'm stealing this. You don't even know who the Dresden Files is. No. <laughs> Protagonist Harry Dresden once rescued a litter of puppies from fire-breathing black-winged monkey demons. He ended up keeping one of the puppies, naming it Mouse. Mouse is a temple dog, believed to be the offspring of a celestial being and a normal dog. And the loyal pupper exhibits supernatural strength, intelligence, and healing. And he occasionally glows blue. Um, actually, Mouse does not glow blue. He does, occasionally. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Um, actually, his name is Harry Blackstone Copperfield Dresden. <laughs> that doesn't... It is still correct to say his name is Harry Dresden. Yeah, <laughs> um, actually, gonna... they weren't monkey demons. Don't even... <laughs> they were, though. They flink okay. poo. All right. Time to get brute Incendiary poo. Analytically. Really oh, wait, hold on. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, um, actually, right. the monkeys don't breathe fire. They throw flaming poo balls. That is correct. Yay! I did actually say that out loud. You did say it out loud. You yeah. just didn't, you never put it, as, you included Have it as a correction. Have they stolen that? Oh. It was like, you know the answer here. You just aren't, uh, you just haven't connected that, that we've said the wrong thing here. Uh, oh my God, Because I was like, you're like flaming died. poo. I was like, she said it, she knows. <laughs> this next question is a fan question. So this was submitted by a fan of the show, wrote their own question, sent it in to us. Here's a question from Miss Bits. First published Published in 1995, the board game Settlers of Catan has players acquire and spend a variety of resources, namely lumber, sheep, ore, grain, and brick. Um, actually, it's not lumber, it's wood. Incorrect. Erica. Um, actually, it's Catan. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not just no, messing no, no, no. with you. Oh, okay, yeah. I got this. Oh, uh, um, actually, it's not brick, it's... Stone? N incorrect. Um, actually, it's not brick, it's clay. No. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call no, it. No, no, wait, no, one no, more, no, 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 Technically speaking, it's not sheep, it's wool. Everyone just Whoa. calls it sheep uh, because you it's sheep on there. Like, but yeah. it's, it makes the noise. It, 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 but if you, yeah, if you look at any of the, any of the literature, any of the things written down, it's written as wool, not as yeah, sheep. Yeah, well, you know what? It's not as funny to say anyone want wool, wool. for wool. No, for sheep wool. is way more wood fun. Wool. That's not funny. <laughs> yeah, also, it's way more fun to imagine funny just like, as like, yeah. like herding sheep around and passing sheep back and forth. I have that game on my phone and I play it all the time. And there's always a bah! every single time you pick it up. So that's why I'm thinking it's sheep. Yeah, we always call I mean, it sheep. It's depicted as sheep. Like it's it's drawn as sheep. It's clear, like and, and and I think most people say like sheep because also that's like it's a more fun word, it's more fun thing, thing thing to say. But it is in fact written as wool, so it's very technically wool. Well, this brings us to our first shiny question of the game. Thank now, God. Shiny questions like shiny Pokemon are worth the same number of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. This is a game called What's Wrong With This Picture? The first person to buzz in and tell me what's wrong with this image will get the point. Flip it over. What is wrong with this image? Yes, Becca. Um, actually, it's a Russian mind game. Uh, no, that is, uh, this is original. Oh, wait, wait, is it made in the U.S.? Nope, that's not what we're looking for here. Okay, so look on the bottom left. I'm you looking. You see this, like, U-shaped piece? 
That's not a Tetris piece. Oh, interesting. No, uh, th that is that is original to the box art. But it is interesting that there are some pieces down there that don't look very Tetrisy. Um, actually, this spire is from The Little Mermaid for <laughs> sure. It's the penis it's one the penis from spire. the VHS <laughs> cover. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it wasn't on the NES. Uh, no, no, incorrect. I can We're hear. really bad at answering all of your That's questions you're, today. Uh, you're all gonna hate this. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's see what it's supposed to look like. Boink. Uh, I hate wait, it. What? Again. I <laughs> hate it. Oh, the R is backwards. The R is backwards. It's uh, it is the Russian ya symbol instead of an R in the That's original Tetris. That's the true Soviet really? mind game. It's like Cyrillic or something. It's Cyrillic. Yeah, oh, they use the Cyrillic symbol. Cool. Uh, which actually, that sound uh, says ya. It, it's not. It's not an R sense. That would actually read more like Tetris. Um, uh, but uh, to give it more of a Soviet flair, more of a, a Russian flair. They used what looks to us like a backwards R, uh, not the forwards. Because I first played it on Game Boy, you know. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true. That's what in, my in later was. editions, they said. do they do spell it out, but in, in this this is how they they depict the. Well, the Tingen characters. can go Tet Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, sorry to say, no one got that one. So um, I'm proud just right. to be here. You know, Same here. I'm glad I know what a ya is now. <laughs> Learn <laughs> something today. Did we make some mistakes? Yes, absolutely, and you caught them. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you, the viewers. At Jeshua Lack had some thoughts about our game matching prosthetics to characters, saying, um, actually, Barrett does have a chainsaw arm as well. We said it only belonged to Ash. This was confusing and an oversight on our part. One point for you. At Cole Bonin One says, um, actually, while it's true Taco Bell won the franchise war in the US release of Demolition Man, Pizza Hut managed to win in the international release as it was believed to be more recognizable. That is just a neat fact. So one point for Cole Bonin One. And from our exclusive dropout Discord, sit Citrus says, um, actually, you can't use any fire extinguisher on a grease fire. Standard fire extinguishers are usually ABC extinguishers and therefore unsuited for the task. You specifically need to use a Class K fire extinguisher. Thank you for keeping us safe in that fire, Citrus. We will give you one point so we don't die in a flame. All right, we will move on to our next question here. Acclaimed screenwriter William Goldman may have written the movie The Princess Bride, but the film was based on a fantasy novel of the same title by S. Morgenstern. Yeah, um, actually, that was his pen name. William Goldman was writing as S.J. Morgenstern. That is correct. Brilliant. Uh, well I'm sorry, I have yep, that maps, poster maps. up, like a <laughs> giant poster in my room, and I read the book, and it was like my favorite thing ever. Well deserved. I love it because, it, have you guys read the book? No, you, the book? you should read the book because it's like so different from the movie. It's written as if he's reading it to like he's discovered his favorite book, S.J. Morgenstern, and he's the one adapting it. And then it's like the good parts version. It's like supposedly an abridged version of an old fairy tale that he heard. And he was reading it. And he's like, oh, there's like 50 pages about hats. This is terrible. Yeah. I can't tell this to my boy. Like, I'm just going to give a good parts version. And that's what the princess bride that we see on the screen is supposedly. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Good. Uh, it's such an interesting it's like a framing story device. Story. Yeah, it's like a story it's like, within a story. It's a, it's, it's a story about storytelling, and that's one of the things I really love about it. Cool. Uh, that is a point for Erica. Well deserved. Yeah, I like Princess Bride a lot. <laughs> Published by Marvel Comics in September 1963, Avengers No. 1 brought together Thor, Captain America, and the Hulk. Iron Man was also a part of the team, sporting his bulky, gold-colored MK2 armor. Um, actually, Becca. Captain America was not in Episode 1. Uh, issue one of the Avengers. That's correct. Hey! <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Yeah, it didn't seem like you knew that. In fact, it seemed like Emmy knew that. Uh, but <laughs> I uh, once read a book called The Untold Story of Marvel Comics. Ah. So I, I have not read issue one of the comics, but I've read about issue one of the comics. <laughs> ah, that's you, so that's some nerdy ass shit. You didn't even read the, the source material. You just read things about the source material. Ah. Uh, I was trying to wait for the question to finish, just in case. The rules to, clearly state I, you I, don't I, have to wait till I finish the question. Yeah. Your politeness will be your downfall. Yeah, I, yeah. I was I'm just thinking about polite. the Princess yeah. Bride question and how if I had listened to the end, it would have thrown me way off. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, Captain America didn't join so until sorry. issue number I'm four. I'm so excited. Uh, as we all know, um, Captain America, the sixth Avenger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> are you out of dinner ideas? You probably are, right? You've probably eaten at least one meal that was just like random leftovers from the fridge thrown together. Okay, maybe it's time you tried HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you'll get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Sick of planning your meals? Let someone else do it. 
Sick of going to the grocery store? Let someone else do it. Sick of taking out all those like fiddly little measuring spoons so you can get the perfect amount of every little ingredient? Let someone else do it. And if you're worried you don't get enough flexibility with HelloFresh, well just stop, okay? You have plenty of flexibility. You can change what day it's delivered, you can change what's in your order. You can double up on those tacos if you're like, damn, I love those tacos. Give me more. You can do that. You can skip a week if you're going out of town. I don't know where you're traveling right now. All right, it seems kind of dangerous at the moment, but you can do that. I tried HelloFresh. It's great. It's like a little sous chef in a box. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want a little help in the kitchen? Someone who's measuring stuff out for them. Someone who's telling them exactly what to do every step of the way. That's HelloFresh. So go to HelloFresh.com slash actually12 and use the code actually12 to get 12 free meals Plus, free shipping. That's what the 12's doing there. That's 12 free meals. That's a lot of free in there. That's right, hellofresh.com slash actually12 and use the code actually12 for 12 free meals and free shipping. That's a free lunch. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Um, okay, this next question is about Star Wars. The Kessel Run is a smuggling route through the Achates Maelstrom, a space storm of swirling gas and debris home to massive creatures called Summa Verminoth. Solo famously completed the run in just over 12 parsecs, a unit of time in Star Wars, although a parsec is an actual measurement of distance. Um, Erica. Actually, yes. the whole idea of him doing, I guess, I guess is from the extended universe, but like it's under 12 parsecs? And it was because it's it may be a measurement of distance, but the idea is that since it's like a black hole, like if you do it in a shorter amount of distance, then you know that's where the prestige comes from. Yeah, you, you go, go closer you, to the ring. Yeah, you you got oh, to go for it. Oh, jeez, Erica, I'm very impressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that yeah, yeah that, that's that's what we're going for. So uh, I, we we claim in the question that it's a unit of time in Star Wars, but it's not. It's still a unit of distance. Yeah. Uh, and and the the fact of completing the Kessel Run in under twelve parsecs is that you manage to do it in less distance because of the way you would navigate the Maelstrom. Uh, uh, that is in the extended universe, um, and they also do include it in Solo. Um, uh, so uh, it is now what, do, no matter what you're calling canon. It's canon. That, that is like that is how the Kessel Run works, and that is how parsecs work in the Star Wars universe. Fair enough. We had a little uh, debate when this when, when we were, when this question was coming up of of like how well known a piece of Star Wars trivia this is. Uh, well, let's just book Erica, and it'll yeah, be fine. I feel like it's one of those things where like Chewie didn't get a medal, where it's like yeah. amongst Star Wars nerds, it's the thing you fire back with when somebody who actually knows science is like, actually, it's a measurement of distance. You're like, well, actually. Yeah, it's like you need you need to have your counter argument ready for people who are like trying to poke holes in your thing. It's like, no, we thought of that. F fuck you. We f yeah. Some author figured it out way back when. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember a friend of mine in college was a big fan of the extended universe. And I remember like one time he drunkenly cornered me. Like I didn't even bring anything up. He was just like, you know, the parsecs. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm learning something now. Man, little did you know how yeah. useful that information yeah, would no be kidding. later in life. This will bring us to our second shiny question. Nice. All right. Uh, your board should be blank. Um, this is a game called Fictionary. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the name of a monster from folklore or uh, mythology or somewhere, and it'll be up to you to uh, draw it to the best of your ability. Now, I won't be judging the drawing oh, on no. like how good it is. I'll just be looking for a couple of key features that will sort of like define the monsters. You will laugh how bad you see how I draw. Yeah, it's real bad. <laughs> it's you know what? Bad. That's part of the, that's part of this game. It's just horrible. to see like what it's what just crazy drawings laugh people come at the up with. How bad they <laughs> are. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, your monster is El Cuero. Oh, nope. right. <laughs> That's uh, really good. Uh, we'll start with, with Erica. Well, you know, I real, really <laughs> always fancied myself a cryptozoologist. Sure. But I could not for the life of me remember what El Cuero was. Okay. Um, so I started with a snake because, I don't know, that seems a good place to start. Sure. I gave him wings and a little top hat because he fancy. And a little heart? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Emmy, why don't you share uh, your, your depiction of El Cuero? All right. First off, I thought just by putting the best spelling of it that I could possible. <laughs> and also on top of that, uh, he has the hat. Oh, you also Everyone put a, also hat. a hat. With this winged beast. Okay. With possible <laughs> water, I'm guessing. That's water. <laughs> this and is then, trying to like bubble in every answer of a multiple yeah. choice. And, and then I'm guessing this is his catchphrase. Uh-huh. El 
dot dot dot. Uh -huh. Fill in the blank, whatever sure, you want sure, to. You know, whatever which is the great. Is. And then hey. he, I'm guessing he has some type of turkey leg. Where's the head? This is see, my <laughs> this is his head, and okay. he, has a, he has a pipe. Got it. Smoking stuff. Okay. And then a carrot nose. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like a snowman, a riff on a snowman, a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. All yes. Right. All right. Okay. And then Becca, why don't you show us? Oh, so glad you asked. I really think Emmy was cheating off my answers over here because I also filled in every bubble possible. <laughs> okay. Let's see, El Cuero, mm -hmm. which translates to the leather. Okay. Maybe or the neck. Mm -hmm. So I gave it a very long <laughs> neck, many eyes. Small wings, chicken feet, and a mace for a tail, and long flowing curly hair, and a forked tongue and a beak. This looks like an ah real monsters monster, <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like like a real like kind of classy shoe folk kind of thing. Um, uh, yeah, these are all. Oh, and a beautiful these... woman breasts and a cloaca. Yes, I uh, yeah I did notice there were some details spent on the nipples <laughs> and a general orifice uh, towards the back it's there. The cloaca. Uh, I, yes, yeah. yeah. I can tell uh, you more about uh, it. Just, it's always open. Great. Um, uh, yeah, just in Was general. that on the check? Were, yeah. were those on the checklist? Um, I, n almost none of this is on the checklist. <laughs> For what? hers, right, but definitely mine. Uh, yeah, well, why don't we take a look at what El Cuero should look like? Let's take a uh, look here. Oh, that oh. Is what? El Cuero should look like. That's it. What is If you put, yeah. if you put mine like this eyes. way. Yeah. The, so the, Antenna? This is a Chilean monster. Uh, it's an aquatic monster that resembles a cowhide floating in the water, um, but on the underside... cow. Um, uh, leather. You, 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 you. I got a Spanish word! <laughs> Two large eyes on stalks, a bunch of teeth under the, the kind of thing, and then like so, a proboscis to drink blood. And the idea is sort of, it is this sort of like flat stingray-like, just kind of looks like a cowhide, but then like, behold, there's there's terrors underneath. Like a flat uh, lamprey. Yeah. The, the weird thing is, Emmy's is like as a depiction is not that far off, but also because it's it looks if you squint, it does kind of look like that. Yeah, like there. Uh, there's like oh, water, water, water this flat thing that looks like right a pipe there. could look like. But then eyes. there's a tiny peanut man with a sombrero <gasps> sitting on top of a whale. This is true. No, uh, this is a person oh, that he's yeah. eating. That's what it is. Oh. Where, mm, this, is, this is this approach is <laughs> abstract art. I think this is a this is a, a bust all around, but lovely drawings of 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 truly terrifying monsters. <laughs> well, we done gone fucked up, and you noticed it. If you noticed something that we got wrong, you can correct us by tweeting at I'm Actually Show or by going to the exclusive Dropout Discord and correcting us there. What is our score line looking at right now? 402. Four? Four. Four. Yep. Four. Wouldn't you? Thought you had three. Surprise! <laughs> wow. There's a lot of crap you can pick up in Fallout 4, from hubcaps to oven mitts, to pepper mills to typewriters, to compact discs to fancy hairbrushes, to Jangles the Moon Monkey. Yes, Eric. I'm actually not compact discs. That's correct. Yeah, it's set in like the guess. future 1950s ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There would there wouldn't be compact discs. Yeah. Yet. There are no, no compact discs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think they could benefit from a little like a little like Marie Kondo kind of thing going on here? It feels like there's a lot of clutter I, going on. In you know oh, yeah. what? It's... I I've wanted to do a sketch about being a video game hoarder because like <laughs> honestly, my inventory is a mess. Like I any time like in in Fallout or in any game where you can level your strength up to carry more inventory, that's what I do yeah. because I'm a hoarder. It's... I've also played a lot of Fallout Four and Witcher Three, and I do the exact opposite. I have to pick up everything in order to scrap it as fast as possible and clean up the world. <laughs> yeah, you're going just, to you're on the anti littering campaign. Yeah. Um, well, that point goes to Erica. Not surprised. Five, five points. Okay. Here's a D and D question. The iconic monster, the Beholder, is a large, floating, spheroid creature with one massive central eye and a variety of other eyes on stalks. In most editions of D&D, each eye stalk has a different, powerful magical ability associated with it, and even when sleeping, they avoid closing all their eyes. They're very intelligent and typically solitary creatures, usually only finding a mate to reproduce with once in their entire lifespan. Beholders are completely original to D&D and date all the way back to the original 1975 Greyhawk setting. Um, actually, they don't mate, ever. That is correct. Hey! <laughs> I mean, they have no genitals. What's the point? <laughs> that, How do they a, mate? That is a good question. They reproduce asexually while asleep by dreaming up new beholders. Oh, I hot. did know that. <laughs> because, because, because. Because you were because, dreaming because, of beholders. Because, yeah. Uh, well, that's a point for Becca. I'll take it. All right, this brings us to our last shiny question of the game. This is a game called Tag Out. So on the other side of this uh, board, there are 
six movie posters, movie covers, with the taglines for those movies removed and placed off to the sides. So it's up to you to match the correct tagline with the correct movie. Whoever gets the most correct will get the point. Uh, ties, you'll both get a point. All right, go ahead and flip those over. Let's take a look at all these movies you got here. What do we have here? Oh my gosh. Oh, I know what okay. you're doing here. <laughs> I know what you're doing oh, here. Nice yeah, you, right. you, you. <laughs> All right, cool. So, Erica, show me what you got here. Okay. Show uh, me so, what you... guess uh, is is Terminator, the, the thing that won't die and the nightmare that won't end. Enter the world for Avatar. Uh, Beyond the Horizon lies the secret to a new beginning for Waterworld, because mm -hmm. I think from what I learned from the show at Universal is they're searching for land somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the one I switched right. last minute. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's right. Yeah. I don't know if it's right. Uh, um, uh, Infinite Space, Infinite Terror, Event Horizon. That's one of the ones that takes place in space. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure their war, our world, is Transformers, which is like very, yeah. I, I think, right? I think because, yeah. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I haven't Cybertron. confirmed any of these. I know, yeah. but she's uh, and good then at stuff. War of the World, they're already here. Is like they were all buried under the ground and the lightning strikes, and then, ah, ah. they're there. Okay. Uh, Emmy, what you got okay, here? At uh, Terminator, the thing that won't die is the uh, nightmare that it won't end. Okay. Avatar, I think it's Enter the World because it was like all 3D and stuff, so they had that whole thing, but I like switched it last moment. With Waterworld, because it's like enter the world of like going into Me the water. Me too. Completely Sounds catchy. Water. Yeah, into the like world. Enter the world. Water into the world. world. Yeah. yeah. And then infinite space, infinite terror. Event Horizon just seems like creepy to me. So mm -hmm. I was like, that that works. I knew that one. There war our world. Mm -hmm. And then they're already here. Tom Cruise saw him yesterday. Actually, crazy. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, they're already here. Is it, they're already here. Tom Cruise, he's, he's already, already here. Hey, do you hear Tom Cruise? He's already here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Um, and then, uh, Becca, let's see how what you, what you put out here. So last minute, I switched everything, and that okay. was a bad idea. <laughs> Terminator also starts with T. Their world, their war, our world. Okay. Avatar, so that was a last minute switch there because the whole, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, the older the movie, <laughs> the more they thought they could sell you with Enter the World, Water World, you know? <laughs> and it's just a movie I never made it through because sure. I fell asleep. Um, War of the Worlds, I feel bad because it's the only movie on here that I, I remember scenes of pretty well. I forgot they came from underground. They're uh, aliens, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're alien mechs, things. I just did bad everywhere, you know? But <laughs> Event Horizon, they both said that one, so I'm pretty sure I got one point. Okay, well, uh, Becca, in fact, you did get one point. Yes! <laughs> yeah! I guessed Event correctly Event Horizon. at how many points uh, I got. Emmy, you got four correct, and Erica, you got all of them. Oh. Uh, in fact, and Nothing yes, yes, Emmy, the two me. you switched around, Avatar and Water Enter the World. world and, I, that uh, was the one that got That's why I even, I even campaigned for the one that I switched. Like, <laughs> Avatar's Enter the World because of 3D. And yeah, then... yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, and look, we were trying to be tricky here, obviously. There's taglines about world. There's multiple things here with world. And uh, war, world. And Transformers, and... you know, could have been already here. There's the word horizon, but then also event horizon. We were clearly trying to trip you up. Um, but uh, so Erica, good. you saw through our tricksy little tricks, and that is a point for Yay! you. <laughs> All right, well, this brings us to our last question of the game. As always, our final question concerns... I'll get on the point. I'll get on the point. Uh, concerns real life skills. Uh, so oh. this is not about any of the things we've been talking about. This is just stuff that could be valuable in your regular life. Dogs may be a non-verbal species, but they can still respond to verbal instructions. It's typically recommended to teach your dog a hand signal command before it's matching verbal one. But once you're using words, you'll want to be sure to speak in a clear, low, authoritative voice to ensure your dog listens. Um, Emmy. Actually, mm -hmm. I think it switched around with voice and then hand movement. Uh, incorrect. Um, actually, sorry. You want to be high pitched and excited when you talk to them, not low and calm. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Were you gonna say that? Yeah, I was gonna say that because I have a high, excitable voice that dogs like me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, well, you know, every dog's a little different, but typically speaking, they uh, uh, res more respond to high-pitched, happy kind of sounds versus like low, uh, 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 deep sounds. So uh, you're much more likely to get uh, get a, um, a response from a from a from a high-pitched, happy, upbeat kind of uh, command than you are from a 
Gruffalo one. Um, big old bagel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard it called that. That's what Mike That's what called call it, it in the intro. Got a couple of zeros, uh, bagel. Uh, I well, call it a goose egg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our final score here then, six, zero, Four. I'll take um, it. Um that makes Erica our winner for this uh for this game. I am extremely surprised. <laughs> well I'm, she's beauty yeah. and she's grace. <laughs> she's <laughs> Miss Um actually. <laughs> we, we bring up the um actually <laughs> crown. Yeah. It's just like a big finger like on top. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Thank you, everyone. Are we okay? Yeah.